we're at a turning point where AI is revolutionizing industries like software development, data entry, as well as customer service and so many others. Big tech companies like Amazon, Meta, and Microsoft are laying off hundreds and thousands of employees because AI can now perform many of these tasks more efficiently and at a lower cost. But why am I telling you this? because I want you to stay ahead of the curve. 2024 is shaping up to be a rather shocking year. My belief is that all repetitive human work that doesn't require the deep emotional connection between two people, um, that will all be done in the next couple of decades, better, cheaper, faster by AI. Companies have been trying to cut down on workers for as long as those workers have demanded pay and benefits. Most experts say by the end of the century, we're very, very likely to have general workers AI. If you're watching this video, you're part of the small percentage of the population that's in position to benefit from AI rather than being negatively impacted by it. My goal is to showcase how you can integrate AI into your workflows to eliminate unproductive tasks, increase your efficiency, streamline processes, and even create AI solutions that you can even potentially sell. Today, I'm going to showcase how you can automate almost any task with a platform I trust a lot, VectorShift. It's an end-to-end -end AI automation platform that's incredibly easy to use, thanks to its easy, no-code, drag-and-drop interface. VectorShift lets you build AI solutions like search engines, assistants, chatbots, and so many other things. I've actually got a whole series on my channel where I demonstrate automations like Gmail management, you have data entry, coding, and so much more. This is how you can stay ahead of the curve. So let's dive into this video and see how you can automate almost any task with the help of AI. So what I want you guys to do is head over to the VectorShift website. It is VectorShift.ai and I'll leave a link to this as well as all the other links that I use in today's video in the description below. Once you are on the VectorShift website, just click on the get started button and you're going to basically be prompted to create an account or log in. Create an account with your email address, with Google, or with GitHub. Once you have done that, we can then proceed with the next step. Now, before we get started, I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that we'll be releasing this week. We then sent over to the main pipeline or the main dashboard. This is where you're going to be able to manage all your different automation. You can see I have a lot because I've been able to automate various things. Now, you have a marketplace in which you can access ready-made templates built by different people are different community members or by the creators of VectorShift themselves. You have a knowledge base in which you can upload your own knowledge, PDFs, or various file types. You have different automations you can manage, chatbots, forums. You can even basically manage or even track the analytics of your automation. But now what we're going to be doing is clicking on this plus sign on the main pipeline dashboard. And we're going to be creating our pipeline from scratch. But you can also create your own knowledge base, chatbot, automation, as well as different evaluation metrics to track your automations. But in our case, we're going to be creating a pipeline from scratch because we're going to be showcasing an AI automation example from our own end. And this way, you can get a better idea as to what sort of things that you can do within VectorShift. Once you click on that, you'll be then sent over to the drag and drop interface. This is the UI that you're going to be easily able to construct your automations by simply pasting different things such as input nodes and output nodes, which is quite foundational for any workflow to be operational. So in this particular example, what we're going to be doing is basically creating a contract automation flow where we're going to be redlining a contract that is sent into this flow and it's going to be able to mark up changes or suggestions directly on the documents during negotiation. And that's basically in the forums, which I'll showcase a bit later. Now, it's where we're going to be automating the contract workflow to ensure that we're going to be able to make sure that if any changes are needed or any additions are needed, you can do so with the help of AI. Here is what we're going to be creating. It's a forum where you can simply upload your contract and you can basically specify an instruction. For example, you can focus on the services levels as well as the support term section. And you're going to be able to get a refined output that focuses on that section in the contract. You can make changes and this way you're gonna be able to easily basically redline your contract where you can make changes, additions, as well as delete certain sections with this AI tool 
for this app that we created. So to get started, now that we have our functional flow where it has an input and an output, we're going to also place in another input. And the reason why is because this input will process the file or the contract itself, and the other one will process the instruction. So once a file is uploaded, we want to basically summarize the context of it, or in other terms, we want it to basically be chunked into smaller sections as a large contract has many different sections. So to help us do this, we're going to be placing a, going over to the logic node and placing a summarizer node. And this will help us basically summarize different sections of the large contract. Once it summarizes the sections, it will then be queried into a knowledge base reader. To do that, head over to the knowledge base tab and you want to basically paste over a knowledge base reader. Now, what we're going to be doing is creating a new knowledge base. In this knowledge base, what we're going to be doing is just simply naming it uh, red line links. And I'll explain this in a bit. In this case, what we're going to be doing is adding URLs to different sorts of pages or articles, which showcase how you can redline a contract. These are best practices. And what we're going to be doing is having the AI train on these best practices so that when it comes to a point for our automation, it will reference the knowledge base to help us extract and basically redline the contract. So what we're going to do is basically scrape the URL. We're going to keep it as a loader type as URL. You can also have it as recursive, meaning that it will be able to uh, recursively on a minutely, hourly, or even monthly or various timeframes to recursively extract and scrape that URL. In this case, we're just going to have it done one time because it's not going to update constantly. But we want to paste this link in and we're going to then add this document. Now for this, we have a couple of the documents that we're going to paste in or URLs. And once we have done that, we're going to then head back over to our drag and drop interface. Lastly, we just simply need to head over to the large language model node and place a large language model of your choice. In this case, I'm going to be pasting an OpenAI large language model node and giving it a system prompt. But you can basically choose between many of these other options, such as Anthropics, Cloud 3.5, Sonnet, or even open source models from Hug and Face. But based off my own preference, I utilized the OpenAI large language model node and I gave it a system prompt where I stated that you are an AI assistant specializing in contract redlining. Your job is to review the provided contract only according to the user instructions. And then I told it to follow with these different steps. Risk assessment, it's going to identify legal problems, recommend different things, reason of charge. And I gave it an, a system, an example system of what it should do. And it's going to basically reference this example to help basically prompt and query different things. So now that we have our workflow set up, what we're going to be doing now is connecting everything. And to help us do this, what we're going to be doing is adding a prompt to connect various things such as the input as well input to process the contract itself and to process the instruction so in this case what we're going to be doing first is going to be creating a new variable in this case you can just click on the insert variable one is going to be for the instruction so we can name it instructions and above it we can go up and name it instruction just for that, this is to connect this node and we're going to basically have this node, which is going to be the contract itself. So what we can do is go over and add another one for the contract and then another one for the knowledge base. And this way, what we're going to be do, able to do is connect all these different nodes together. And what I'm also going to be doing is having the contract inputted into the summarizer and the summarizer into the knowledge base. And then this way, the knowledge base can then connect over to the OpenAI large language model node. So I'm going to go ahead and connect all these different nodes, so then we can test this out. So now that we have configured our workflow, what we can do is just simply click on deploy changes and we can start running this pipeline. Now you can test it out over here by simply uploading a file and testing it out. But in this case, it's best if we just simply export this as a forum. And in this case, we're going to be able to test this out to see what we're capable of doing so let's just name it contract redline and we can then create this forum now in this case you can change the description change the organizational logo or the different outputs as well as having a different styling for this forum so now that we have this configured we can then export this we can even open this up as a url or you can even have it embedded into your website now let's just test this out 
what we're going to be doing is feeding it this msa which is a master service agreement it's a quite lengthy contract and we're going to basically have it focus on a particular area such as the disclaimer so what we're going to do is we're going to have it fed into our forum which we just created so let's just simply upload this let's upload it and give it an instruction emphasize a bit more on this section which is the disclaimer and limitation we're going to then submit it to the ai and it's going to be able to redline that particular area for us within a couple sections and you can see that it was able to showcase this section and it's also going to give us a recommended area to focus on reason for change and it's also going to provide us the risk grade you can see that it was able to redline that contract section for us within a couple of seconds and this is the capability of vector shift how you can automate the redlining process of different automations and contracts for us but that's about it for today's video i've made so many videos on various automations with vector shift and in my opinion this is the best automation platform that's out there because you're going to be able to automate various things from various areas so definitely recommend that you take a look at this and i'll leave all the links that i use in today's video in the description below make sure you take a look at my patreon page so that you can access different subscriptions completely for free make sure you follow me on twitter a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest ai news and lastly make sure you guys subscribe turn on the notification bell like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest ai news but with that thought guys have an amazing day spread positivity and i'll see you guys fairly shortly peace out fellas